click, 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 and then saw the guy's face. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times the internet solved crimes or found criminals. He called police and thought that was the end of it until these pictures of two men surfaced through his iCloud account. I was up all night, but within two hours, I had names and a basic idea of what was going on that night, and it was all on Twitter. There was just no way it was going to end well. Now, who, who knew it was going to end this badly? For this list, we're looking at times that people on the internet worked together to solve some type of crime. Which of these stories do you find the most fascinating? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. Brad Willman's Trojan Horse Back in the late 90s, a Canadian man named Brad Willman devised a Trojan horse that allowed him complete access to the computers that downloaded it. Wilman placed the Trojan horse on websites dedicated to predators, and at the height of Wilman's activity, he was monitoring up to 3,000 computers. These belonged to a wide variety of people, including priests, social workers, police officers, and military personnel. His program aided in numerous official channels, including a Kentucky state investigation and a case involving the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. But perhaps his biggest catch was Superior Court Judge Ronald Klein, who pleaded guilty to possessing explicit material and was sentenced to 27 months in prison. Number 9. Finding Sean Power's Laptop A Canadian web consultant named Sean Power was the victim of a laptop thief while visiting New York City. After returning home to Canada, a tracking tool called Prey alerted Power that his computer was in use and provided screenshots of the user. The man logged into Skype using his real name, giving Power his name, face, and location. His 12,000 Twitter followers then banded together, with one discovering that he was the owner of a restaurant called Oficina Latina. Um, so it was kind of clear intent that they kind of wanted to keep the laptop, which is fine, I guess, but um, I guess when he was confronted with the fact that we had pictures of him in his bank account, he changed his mind. Powers sent a female friend to investigate, and a Twitter follower named Nick Reese ventured to the restaurant on behalf of Powers. They were able to reclaim the bag and the laptop, and Powers called the perp to thank him for returning his belongings. Number 8. iPad Selfies That pesky cloud and its penchant for stopping criminals. Now, the things you do on your phone are everywhere you want them automatically. In January of 2015, Randy Schaefer woke up to find his truck broken into. Missing was a bag containing cash, an iPad, and a MacBook. After informing the police, Schaefer realized that some pictures had been uploaded to his iCloud account. There were several pictures. There's about 15 pictures. Schaefer uploaded the photos to Click2 Houston's Facebook page and received 11,000 shares. Meanwhile, his friend shared the photos on Reddit and a user recognized one of the perps from high school. The friend was linked to the Facebook account of one Dorian Walker Gaines, where they found a video of the man flaunting his newfound cash. Don't, don't worry about no how. No 20s, no 20s, no 5s, no 10s. Read it. Big face. The authorities were alerted, and the perps were promptly arrested. Number 7. Virginia Hit and Run On April 7, 2012, a 57-year-old woman was killed in a hit-and-run in Virginia. No description of the car was provided, and the only thing police had to go on was a small piece of metal that broke off the car upon impact. They posted a photo of the piece online, and it was quickly picked up by car enthusiast website Jalopnik. Its users quickly identified the metal as the grill from a Ford F-150. They narrowed it down to the exact year and trim level, and the police used this information to build their case. It eventually led them to Victor Espinoza and Juan Gonzalez Vasquez, both of whom were arrested and slapped with hit and run charges. Number 6. The Steubenville High School Case This very public and controversial case involved a crime perpetrated against a 16 year old high school student. It appears that the uh, juvenile victim attended a party, and we're still waiting to find out exactly what happened from there may have happened in several locations, both in the city and outside the city. The act was graphically disseminated through social media, with dozens of people documenting the event through text messaging and social media sites like Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Many of these posts were found and publicly released by crime blogger and amateur sleuth Alexandria Goddard. 
Alexandria Goddard is a crime blogger who posted all the messages and all the names of the boys involved, even those who had not been charged with any criminal wrongdoing. Extra footage was leaked by an anonymous offshoot known as NightSec. Both were paramount in publicizing the Steubenville case and making it national news. And then all of a sudden, some guy comes on, he's not even from the area, and he's like, I'm coming for you. She's passed out, it's not okay. The information was also responsible for exposing the perpetrators, both of whom were convicted and sent to juvenile detention for one and two years respectively. That both of the defendants are hereby adjudicated delinquent beyond a reasonable doubt on all three counts as charged. Number five, Philadelphia Swarm. In this horrible case, over a dozen people attacked a gay couple on the streets of Philadelphia while making disparaging remarks about their sexual orientation. The attack has outraged the city and raised concerns about the law. The police released surveillance video of the incident, and a Twitter user named Greg Bennett posted a Facebook photo of what looked like the assailants in a nearby restaurant. Bennett claims that the photo was sent to him by a friend of a friend of a friend. The restaurant was identified as La Viola, and user at since 9 cross-checked Facebook for people who had checked into La Viola that night. They found numerous matches, and Twitter now had names. The names were given over to police, and Detective Joseph Murray thanked them for their efforts. Number 4. The Death of Gregory May Back in 1995, cousins of Ellen Leach went missing, and this eventually inspired the Mississippi resident to become a web sleuth dedicated to finding missing persons around the country. In the early 2000s, a skull was found inside a bucket of concrete, and a clay reconstruction of its human face was produced. Web sleuth Leach found a match with one Gregory May, a missing antiques dealer who was robbed by his roommate. The roommate, Douglas De Bruin, had stolen May's antiques collection worth $70,000 and was going to trial for May's potential murder. The only problem was the lack of a body. Fortunately, the skull was indeed matched to May, and De Bruin was convicted and sent to prison for orchestrating his death. Number 3. The Case of William Francis Melchert Dinkle This married father of two perused chat rooms and posed as a depressed 20-something woman. He would then enter into fake death packs with despondent people, often providing them with detailed instructions. In November of 2006, a retired school teacher named Celia Blay got word of one Lee Dow who had made a death pact with her friend. Blay investigated Lee Dow and found other aliases and prior packs. The police were not interested, so Blay set up a sting operation in which she was able to track the user's IP address to William Francis Melchert Dinkle in Minnesota. The St. Paul Police Department apprehended the man, and he was convicted on two counts. He spent 178 days in prison. Number 2. Abraham Shakespeare While buying cigarettes at a Florida convenience store in 2006, Abraham Shakespeare decided to try his luck and bought some lottery tickets. Those tickets made him $17 million richer. Shakespeare bought himself that new car, a fancy new house, and lots more. But as so often happens, this lotto winner's drama didn't stick to the script. That's because the money also brought unwanted attention. A lady named Dee Dee Moore then started a business with Shakespeare and gave herself full control over the funds. So when Shakespeare later went missing, police immediately suspected Moore. In the beginning, we thought he was missing, that he was hiding away. As the investigation continues, the evidence mounts that he could have died because of sinister means. Murder, we're talking here. Could be. She in turn claimed that Shakespeare had gone to live somewhere remote, having grown sick of the constant requests for money. Prosecutors paint a picture of Moore as a conniving manipulator, intent on taking Shakespeare's cash. Web sleuths also blamed Moore. And when an anonymous user logged in to defend Moore's name, their IP address was traced. It led directly to Moore herself. Cold, calculated, cruel. They all apply. Manipulative, probably the most manipulative person that this court has seen. She was later arrested for the death of Shakespeare, as his body was found in the backyard of her house. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one. Luca Magnata. And so I was on Facebook one day and I found a post 
A lot of people have been feverishly posting about a video that was online. In 2010, a video was posted online depicting violence against animals. This resulted in the creation of a Facebook group intent on identifying the perpetrator. Eventually, the amateur sleuths were tipped off to the name Luca Magnata, perhaps by Magnata himself. Of course, what you're gonna do, you Luca Magnata, hit enter. And oh my God, it just like hit, he just, I don't know how to explain my reaction to what the results were. The group was able to match their clues to publicly available photos of Magnata, proving successful in their hunt. Then in 2012, student Jun Lin was killed in Montreal, Canada, and the graphic video depicting his death further drew the group's attention. It was no longer a game of online, this was real world. They were able to help link Magnata to the killer in the video. Magnata was eventually traced by police to Berlin and extradited back to Canada, where he was sentenced to life in prison. They finally caught him. And it was just like the perfect way for Luca to go down. Luca was caught in an internet cafe because he couldn't stay away from his vanity. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.